welcome everyone. I'm going to get rolling here since we're at 3.31 and thank you so much for all of you who are joining us today and for taking time out of your afternoon after school to come and do um, make some art and talk about art with us. We're really happy that you've uh, joined us and so my name is Amelia for those of you I haven't met before and I'm an art teacher at Artists for Kids and I'm so excited to be joined today as well by Nadina Tandy who is a friend and an artist from the Sunshine Coast and um, before we get too far I wanted to let you know that I am recording or hopefully recording. I'm new to recording in MS Teams, but I'm trying to record right now uh, just so that we can document this and um, have it as a resource for other teachers who haven't been able to join us today. And also before I go any further, I wanted to begin by acknowledging that I'm located here in North Vancouver on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, and specifically the Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And so today in our workshop, in the next hour, we're going to be sharing with you a collage project that you can carry out with your classes. And so I'm going to start by just giving you a really brief introduction to the project. And I'm going to then introduce Nadina. And she's then going to take some time to share about her own art practice. And we will then walk you through this collage project. And hopefully, if you have your materials with you, which hopefully you do, I'll go over those in just a minute, um, you can actually make a sample while we're together today and have it uh, be awesome to see some of the things that people create today while we're together. And you can use it as a teaching sample and then carry out this project. Um, in your classes and um, there'll be some time to hopefully share, uh, ask Nadina questions and um, if you have any ideas about how you might execute this project with your students we would really love to hear about that as well. Uh, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat as well as we, yeah okay so Heather has just mentioned in the chat she didn't get the materials and I really am so sorry we sent out in the milk run, which is Nadina, our like inter-office mail thing between yes. schools last week to this whole list of people, um, color copies of this collage kit um, and also like thick art paper. So I'm real, I just feel like totally flummoxed here. I don't understand where they went. Who received your collage kits? I don't know. It's sort of a mystery. Maybe it just went out to the, the universe and other people who aren't here right now just have your collage kits and I don't know. It's kind of bizarre. Yay. But I'm yay, maybe they'll use them and that's cool. But I'm really sorry you didn't receive them and I'm happy to look into that more and resend them so that you have them. Um, I will switch over to my overhand camera for just a minute and show you the materials that I do. Oh, you get your milk run on Tuesdays. Okay, and so see, I've been told that the milk run is like delivered sort of daily, but maybe I'm misinformed on this uh, point and need to kind of uh, plan differently in the future. So my apologies to those who didn't receive them. That's a real bummer. You will get them, I guess, um, at some point. But here, I'll show you the materials that I have with me today. So I do have my printed collage kit. If you have been to have it printed even in black and white, that's awesome. If not, even if you have some like a magazine or like a brochure or something around that you can cut up a bit, that would work just fine. A newspaper. I have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of uh, printer paper, a thicker piece of paper, which could be like construction paper, cardstock, poster board, something just a little thicker. I have a bit of scrap paper. And then I have my just a few colors of uh, pencil crayons, crayons. Um, tape, well, let's see, tape, uh, a stick, um, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, and then a few things I just collected quickly outside that are kind of flatter um, natural materials. So I will switch back to my 
face here for a minute. Um, and so I just wanted to give you a quick um, introduction and overview to what this project is. Um, and so for many years, AFK has been hosting enrichment workshops for students in the North Vancouver School District. And traditionally, those have been offered three times a year for grade three, grade seven and secondary. Um, and students in the past have been nominated by their teachers to come to AFK for two days to work directly with an artist. And last spring during the lockdown, we had an enrichment for grade three plan, but of course had to pivot and launch it in a different way. And so that was the first time we worked with an artist. In that case, it was Janet Wang, who's a North Van based artist, uh, to develop a series of art activity videos. And so we launched those on our website and they've been shared across the district and beyond. And that's the model we've used for our enrichment workshops um, for this 2020-2021 school year, since we still have not been able to have the students come to us and to work with these artists directly. And so we connected with Nadina to work with us as our grade three enrichment artist for this spring. And when we ta first talked, we didn't know whether it would be in person or uh, virtually, and it has become a virtual program. Um, but she has created a series of two videos and um, they're really developed for a primary age group. But I do think that this activity can be adapted and used across different age groups groups and different grade levels and I think Nadina will speak to that a bit because she has led a very similar um, activity with quite a few different grade levels on the Sunshine Coast and so those videos are already up on the AFK website and I can actually just quickly share with you um, I will share my screen and just very quickly show you where you can um, find those on our website so uh, here, um, on, if you go to the AFK website under Learn, you have AFK Artists and Residents. And here is our Spring 2021 Nadina Tandy. And if you scroll down, we have our two videos up on the website. And so they show the project kind of step by step. So you'd start with video one and then watch video two. And then the collage creature kit, which you were all supposed to receive, uh, the PDF can be found here. And so it's like a lovely little downloadable PDF that Nadina created for us. And then I've created a curriculum document as well, which over, like, creates an overview or presents an overview of the project and the, all the materials needed and then links it to the BC curriculum and arts education and um, Eng English language arts and also to the core competencies. And so that's where you can find those materials on our website. And so I will now introduce Nadina and then I will pass things over to her for a bit. Um, so I first met Nadina almost 10 years ago now when, I, can you believe it, uh, when I was living on the Sunshine Coast in Gibsons and I was really excited to bring Nadina on board to work with AFK. I have to admit the when the idea first occurred to me, it was last spring um, during the lockdown, uh, strange and stressful time as you all have known and have experienced. And at that time, she was creating these beautiful collage creatures, which you will see some examples of soon. And she was posting these images of them placed just so whimsically and beautifully in places around the Sunshine Coast that were familiar to me. But like every time I saw these images, they just made me smile or even sometimes laugh out loud. And it was just like the most perfect beautiful kind of antidote to what was going on for me at the time and I was like she has to come work with our students and so here she is which is so lovely and um, so I just thought that she would be such a great fit especially for the grade three enrichment and that kind of playfulness and the humor that she brings I've so appreciated and so as an introduction also to Nadina and her practice uh, she had earned a fine arts diploma from Langara College and studied drawing and painting at Emily Carr. And she also completed photography, a photography certificate at Concordia University. 
And she has a broad exhibition history, and her works are part of private and public collections through North America and Europe. And her work has been featured in print and on television and radio. And she's also produced artwork for several book covers. And she lives and works on the Sunshine Coast. And she's also worked with many schools and community organizations on the Sunshine Coast as an artist in residence. And so she brings that really rich experience to her work and this project we're sharing with you um, at AFK. So with that, I will pass it on to Nadina. And Nadina, do you just let me know when you want me to share those images. Mm. Um, well, first off, I want to thank Amelia and um, Emily for bringing me on and helping me with the videos because that was a learning curve for me. Um, um, but I'm happy with the end result. And uh, I am in on the Sunshine Coast, and that is also Squamish Nation. Um, and, well, why don't I... Um, share a couple of pieces of my artwork so that uh, then I can just talk and not have to yes look at myself <laughs> okay. so I will share my screen here all right so this first one is called I'm a river and what what um, I do is this was from maps from um, uh, 1956 re re resource, BC resource maps that I'd had for years and years, like probably 25 years in the studio. And um, I just have, it's like this big book. It's probably, I don't know, 29 by 30. And I paint right on it. So we can show the next. <laughs> yes. And um, you can see my work is like the, it, it's colorful and my style is um, uh, comes across as naive, perhaps, but but I it's not. <laughs> I'm a deep thinker. So then uh, we'll go next. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's. Just a, a little glimpse of some of the the work because I get inspired by by things that I find, and the stories that they come with, and then it 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 just takes me on another journey. So it's kind of um, the way that I work. I'm I explore, and just by doing the work, the the art comes out, and um, I cut. It's kind of a learning process as I go about what the meaning is. Um, yeah, I'd say it's kind of symbiotic. So um, we're going to move on to the next slide. So this is uh, artist in residence that I was um, sponsored by uh, the Sunshine Coast Arts Council and the um, Seashelt Downtown Business Association. And it was a 1500 square foot studio space all to myself. And the plan was to, um, I was going to paint, I was going to just paint and have a, the uh, an uh, occasional workshop. I was there for four months, but I got the keys on March, and then about two weeks later, it was all shut down, and um, because of COVID, and it was a very uh, as everybody had the same feeling. You you don't know what's happening. You don't know what's next. So I I just started doing these creatures these little you can see in the picture there's that little owl and i i couldn't have people in the the studio space so i just was i just wrote on the windows with these posca pens and i i drew funny animals and just kind of engaged the community and um tried to bring some lightness in a very uncertain time and um uh, so yeah, I went every day and created these little collage creatures, put them on sticks, had them up, lining up in the windows, and then I would go out, put them in the community, take photos and post them. And it occupied me, um, kept me positive. And, um, and as a result from this, it, it's kind of, um, uh, I also 
do uh, as an artist in resident teach at some of the elementary schools up here. And those jobs stopped. And so I came up with doing um, a collage kit and then that turned into doing um, <clears throat> sort of a video that went out to the school system up here and then they had an art exhibition up here. So, so um, yeah, 350 kids have done these little uh, creatures from the collage kits that I made. Um, the one that I've done for Artists for Kids is specific to Artists for Kids though too. So it's uh, um, um, the same but different. Okay, so and what's next? Oh, here's an example, yes. So here's an example. This is um, uh, the Art Council in Seashelt exhibiting the 350 kids art. And this uh, what we're, that we're looking at is it's the spider program. So I think the kids, they're homeschooled. And I think this particular grouping, they're about eight years old. And this image of the little bird with wings, with the beak, um, really, I just love it. And I turned it around and on the back it says, I'm a bee. So it was like, <laughs> um, just the imagination of the kids and the, the, the way that they put these creatures together is, it's so much fun to do. This is also a, a great example on how to display uh, the work too. Like this, these are skewers and we just got wood and, and drilled holes in it. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide. Um, this is the art gallery and we have a teaching wall. So it's got some of my collage and then um, Simon did a project with the grade six and seven, which was um, like a chemistry thing with, with plants on uh, photograph paper. So, so that's what those little squares are, but uh, beautiful exhibit. Um, and we'll go next. And that's just a closer, closer look. So the younger kids did just the rubbings and, and then put them on sticks and then they wrote stories because we, the, you know, the question is, is like the, the kids are making these little creatures and you want them to interact with each other and, and communicate and have stories and they, they just have so much character and it's a lot of fun. So next. So this is um, an, an example of one of my small collages that I did at my artist in resident. Um, when I left after the four months, I was given a wall to do a mural. So I enlarged these little collages on um, its architecture paper and it's very inexpensive. This whole image of this woman, she's probably seven feet tall. It probably cost, I don't know, $25 to print. And I mean, I have to cut it out and then I have to wheat paste it onto the cement wall. It's not permanent, but um, it sure looked, looked good and it was fun to do. And um, uh, that kind of wraps up that. <laughs> Let's make some art. Yeah, so I, what I'm going to do is um, I'll switch over to my like uh, document camera and sort of walk through the steps and Adina can kind of um, speak to um, some of the steps and how also kind of maybe speak to how they're presented in the videos as well. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to view them yet, but um, we'll kind of, I think, kind of in a, an abbreviated way, sort of go through the, the steps of the project um, and know that uh, in the two videos that Nadina created, the steps are kind of broken down and I think presented in a way that will be accessible for your students. Um, and also provide, the videos also provide something I really appreciate, like a glimpse into Nadina's studio space for the, mm -hmm. st for the students and into her kind of workspace. And uh, she shares a bit about her, 
her practice and how she gathers collage materials and organizes them and that sort of thing because so it provides a bit of a window into her practice as well for your students um, but with that I'm going to switch over to my document camera and kind of get rolling with the project and so if you do have um, access to some of these materials it'd be so awesome if you're able to kind of follow along or do your best to follow along and then we can share what we create at the end so i can kind of flip through the collage creature kit um nadina selected and you can speak to this as well nadina maybe and like where you get these images from and stuff but selected these multiple pages of imagery and of course like your students could always search on their own for these kinds of things if you brought in magazines or brochures or what have you but I kind of loved the idea of kind of a pre-made kit as well. So it's kind of almost just makes it accessible. And I think it's something like they're handpicked by the artist as well, which is kind of unique. Um, but Nadina, maybe as I, I'm going to pick a couple uh, items to start my character with, but maybe you could speak to how you ended up creating these kits and like where you got the images from. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I have, I have a, a, big collection. <laughs> I don't even know if I should move my tablet to show you. I have a lot of um, magazines and um, uh, really like kind of magazines from like the 80s and and bird magazines, plant magazines, um, fashion, rock, all of these things. So um, um, there's, a, there's also some really good resources of uh, Oh, what is it? Bi the Biodiversity. Um, it's a website you can go to, and they they have all animals, plants, like snakes, all this different stuff that you can you can print and use. And it's um, oh, what's that thing? It's co copyright. You can just use it. You have access to using it however you want to use it. But um, uh, I've been doing collage for. A long time and it's um, it's something that is accessible to everybody because a lot of lot what I found too is a lot of um, adults children too you know they, they get caught up in that they don't know how to draw so they don't create and if you can cut something out you 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 can start creating and you don't have to get hung up on anything um looking a certain way it just it's kind of frees you up and and it's also um kind of a good tool for your subconscious mind because when you start putting images together then it gets playful and and you you think you just you kind of entertain yourself well you know and so amelia is cutting out so this image that amelia is cutting out is an artist um from brazil and i bought his artwork he it's this was a needle point on mill felt um and um yeah i took a photo of it and then printed it and i just <laughs> so yeah i like that combination <laughs> so right now and Nadina talks about this in the video but right now I mean as you can see I'm selecting some of the like from some of the things that she pre-selected um, and kind of playing around with laying them out and Nadina also speaks in the video which I appreciate about the importance of kind of maybe having a few different options and not decide like settling right away on what you're going to create and not gluing them down right away, kind of moving them around and, um, <laughs> and, um, sort of playing. I think like play is an important component yeah. of this process. And Adina actually talks about that as well in the video and that how like play and experimentation are an important part of her art practice. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and like select some of these items um, and then 
even before she gets to this kind of step in the video, I've sort of jumped in and started doing it. I think it's partly because I have these, this kid in front of me and it's so enticing. Um, Oh, we, we do. We also did think through in the videos, knowing that not all of you would have access to color printers. In fact, most of you maybe wouldn't, um, that if you were to print these in black and white, um, you could, uh, have your students add color to them, you uh, sort of like lightly coloring over the images uh, mm -hmm. using pencil crayon or crayon. And Nadina demonstrates that in her video uh, mm -hmm. to make that like a really good kind of possibility for your students as well. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I'll cut out a couple things here to have some options. I have to say, actually, I hadn't even dove into this before the workshop, but there's something kind of satisfying about someone having done some of the selection for you in advance uh, mm -hmm. and not have like go flipping through and having endless options. I know when I teach collage sometimes I really have to put like a specific time limit on the searching part of the um, process because I mean, students understandably enjoy it, but they get like lost in that process too. So I think there's something kind of fun about having like a pre curated uh, selection of items. Um, so I'm going to actually pause there and backtrack for a minute because actually the first thing that Nadina talks about in her, like the process in her video is going outside and she demonstrates going outdoors and selecting um, objects with texture and having a little paper bag or a little folder to put them into. And then she demonstrates in that first video the uh, rubbing process and so maybe what I'm going to do I have my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper I'm actually I didn't pre-cut it but I'm just going to tear it into four or maybe I'll just fold it into four and then I have like four quadrants um, you might for your students want to just have uh, four sheets pre-cut so they're just working on a smaller sheet of paper but I'll just use this bigger sheet. Uh, I'm going to experiment a bit with making some rubbings or doing frittage um, with the crayons. We gave both options of the crayons and the pencil crayons. Also really trying to be mindful of one, what you have available in your classroom. And two, from my experience, like depending on the age group that you work with, I, I, an older student would have maybe more success with the pencil crayon. I've worked like with the younger say k ones and i find that the crayon is easier for them to get a successful rubbing with um so while i try to make a couple of rubbings nadina do you want to talk a little bit about the process of making rubbings and how you kind of uh, introduce that in the video and the sort of the mm -hmm. bit of the history or connection to printmaking oh well the with like as you said for taj um is it's an old technique with printmaking, but it's where my um, introduction to it was in surrealism and um, the dataists, and, and it was kind of a tool that they used to tap into your subconscious. Um, but what, what I was thinking with the, the kids, it's also a way to um, go outside and to explore nature and to um there's something really satisfying about rubbing and then seeing the pattern and texture like you know all those veins and stuff like like it's young and old it's fun <laughs> it's magical even actually as yeah. i'm doing it i'm <laughs> I yeah. find it's so enjoyable like getting yeah. to see that appear it's so beautiful yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's and like yeah Sorry, and then you, but you know, you do these kind of things, and it seems like a um, simplistic kind of task, but it it leads to other things. It lead it it wakes up your imagination. It just and it's just um, a fun activity to do with with the kids to to go out and find things and to 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 do the rubbings. And it has it's um oh what's the teaching you know a high success. It's open ended, like you can't you can't do it wrong. It's just you're gonna you're gonna get something. 
it's a good ex- like to experiment too. Like as I'm doing this, I'm finding, and you would could talk about this with your students too. I think like what your what ends up being most successful with capturing textures. And this bark, for example, is more three dimensional, and I'm struggling. I mean, I captured a bit of it, but I'm struggling to ha- get a successful rubbing from it. But it's a if you have a lot of little squares of paper that students can experiment on, it's kind of a trial and error thing, which I think is positive as well to kind of go through that process and figure out what is the best sort of technique uh, where you're going to capture a texture that you're happy with. Mm-hmm. I well, think it's an activity really, on itself. Pardon me? It's an activity on itself. It too. is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think really the stressing the side of the um, the material like that is something I've noticed like when I've done rubbings with students and they have the urge to just use the tip of the art material mm-hmm. and that's really not going to uh, ha- help them to be successful I would see if I start to do that I get this like scribbly kind of thing happening and really stressing whether it's with a crayon or with a pencil crayon using that long edge uh, in order to capture a successful rubbing. And you can start light and go harder. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, my little collection that I have to work, which is pretty Are fun. Are you uh, going to make shapes out of that? Yeah. So yeah. So that's in the Nadina breaks down all these steps real in a really lovely way in the videos. But like I said, like starts with the collection of materials, and then step by step how to create these rubbings and then sort of assembling some of the pieces that are in the kit and also creating your own um, shapes uh, and like kind of body parts from the rubbings and so it just seems like these big leaves the natural fit is really to turn them into wings I guess I've seen you do that Nadina so now I'm uh, influenced by that but mm-hmm. they just make such a beautiful oh yeah oh. yeah uh, although I don't have two to go together so I think this one will have to have like mismatched wings um, and that's and, okay <laughs> yeah why not this is my made up creature um, and Nadina also does demonstrate a bit, uh, showing like that you could incorporate some of the actual objects into the character as well. So I would say I only have a glue stick. Perhaps if you're getting into sort of more like thick or three dimensional stuff, it might be easier to attach those with white glue. Um, but otherwise I think a glue stick is sufficient. Um, is anyone else able to is follow along here? Is anyone sort of joining me in the uh, creation process and willing to share? Or, uh, well, I'm, ask- I'm, I'm making stuff here. I went and photocopied it off. It's black and white, but I'm going to make something. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, well, I want to see what you're creating there, Heather. Um, so... I think another thing that Nadina kind of shares, and I would, if, from a design perspective, um, I think is nice, like with the idea of layering and sort of uh, whether you're sort like talk of, you know, about with your students, like tucking things behind um, the character, but also having things in front as well. And that idea of kind of layering as you go um, as part of the design process, I think is important. Uh, and then she did actually, instead of uh, it gluing down an actual object onto my um, my character here, Nadina did even include these lovely scans of some of these natural objects. So if you weren't able to put something more three dimensional down, um, you could have your students select from the the scanned objects that Nadina included. Mm-hmm. It's also a way to learn uh, some of the plant because I labeled it. So when you're going out, you can know, oh, this is cedar. Oh, this is a fern. This is so it's kind of and moss. Moss makes great hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I could. Oh, how about this could be like a tail? Oh, nice. That's pine. <laughs> And I think one other thing 
things I really appreciated in the video also is like Nadina talks about it being like a process that is like funny making these characters and she kind of like chooses things based on like what makes her laugh or what she's getting amusement from and I think it's just nice to sometimes have uh, an, a project that is is light and is going to cause like you know to inspire laughter and play just in the very process of it and and that's something I've enjoyed about this series. So I'll include a couple more things here and then start uh, gluing down. So I'm, I'm arranging them all on this thicker piece of paper. And like I said, I'll, I everyone here should hopefully be, oh, someone says their eight-year-old is sitting beside them. Oh, hi. Oh, <laughs> Jacqueline, that's amazing. I love that. Yay. I have to admit I've played the video series for both my children who are seven and three and they were pretty uh enticed and so i think we'll be doing this at home as well so um i know i lost my train of thought but anyway nadina really does talk about uh arrange like playing with your arrangement before settling on it and then once you've got everything overlapped it can become a bit of a puzzle to start gluing it down and remembering where it all goes but i'm gluing down on this i think this is what i was saying the thick piece of paper which i will hopefully everyone will receive but even with your students you could just use uh, I think construction paper would be okay or if you had something like poster board or cardstock or something that you could cut up even if you were in a pinch like this would be harder for your students to cut but you can use like the cardboard from a cereal box or something that would be a little bit trickier for small hands to cut through but um I'll start gluing down here and I've got a scrap of paper to glue down on top of. Very good collage tip to help with <laughs> paper. <laughs> yes, and Nadina includes that tip in the video. <laughs> oh, it's key. Your gluing process. And get my body stuck down. And I think some of the questions Nadina asks to like near the end of the video, I think are really fun. And I think kind of speak to some of the potential with this lesson, which is like have asking the students, like, who is this character? And like, maybe like, what's their story? Uh, what's their habitat or their environment? So I think this could really connect nicely to kind of a, a storytelling or language arts sort of um, lesson or connection. Oops, I can add things in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was just asking, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I just had a question about the biodiversity website. You said you got really good imagery from Nadina. Do. do you know the name of the website? I think it's biodiversity. Well, let me just, I'll, I'll look see if I can see. find it on my phone here. Um, well, I, I'll show you some of the stuff that I've gotten from the website. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. You know, so it's, um, gorgeous. So I'll look that up while uh, Amelia is gluing things down. So let's see. So once your students get uh, all the pieces glued down onto their sort of cardstock, then the next step would be cutting out around these collage pieces. And so that's why I think you'd want, depending on maybe the age group that you work with, you'd want to think about their cutting capacity and then like what thickness of paper would work well for them to uh, cut through. Here's my little tail. Okay, so there's my creature. And so now I'm simply going to cut around and I think depending on uh, what the students are able to do, you could leave like a, a small 
kind of border around the whole um, the whole creature or cut so that it's like flush with the collage that you've created. I think either works just fine. And I've just included two of my rubbings, but of course there's like endless possibilities and students could find ways to incorporate bits and pieces of all of their rubbings if they wanted or cutting out all sorts of different things and layering them on. And so just cutting out around the character like that. I have a question. Would this be a project that, they, that the teachers do with the kids all in one um, activity or will they be breaking it up? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I mean, you'll see when, when people like view the videos, I think it's quite naturally um, broken up into maybe like two separate sessions potentially yeah. or even more depending on the amount of time that you have to dedicate to the project mm -hmm. um but the first as i mentioned the first session like the first video focuses on going outside and collecting objects and then creating rubbings and then the next session or next video focuses on selecting um images and arranging them and cutting out shapes from the um, from the rubbings and then creating the puppet itself. So then I have my handy dandy stick that I found outside and I would just, um, oh my goodness, I've got quite a mess on my desk now. Um, I would tape it on using masking tape and really that completes my um, completes my puppet. <laughs> uh, yay! So, I mean, you can kind of take more or less time with this project. I think there's something kind of beautiful in the simplicity of it and that you can sort of expand it or simplify it uh, depending on your time or interests or students' interests. I'm going to switch over to my face now. Um, and so I think it's something that you could do as sort of a shorter, playful uh, project near the end of the year or something that could be expanded where students could, <laughs> um, where they could develop this character and really think a lot about it and create a name and a story or even draw it in its own little um, comic book. Um, I know Michelle who's here, did a, uh, something kind of, I would say, connected to this, making uh, clay fantastical creatures and then having students make like a comic strip about that creature. Yeah, sorry, Michelle, I put you on the spot there. I don't know if you want to speak no, to that. No, that's okay. That's so nice. We haven't, we haven't done them yet. But uh, look, we have like a whole team here doing our collage program. Yay! Hello! Oh, oh. <laughs> I get to see that. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Geneva. Hi, Geneva. Hi, Geneva. Hi, Geneva. Hi, Geneva. Hi, Geneva. I miss you, Geneva. <laughs> I miss you guys, too. Sorry. <laughs> So I think like there's a lot you can also really play with in term and that Nadina has really explored with this project. <laughs> uh, oh, nice to see people there working away. <laughs> I can't classes. see anybody. Oh, you can't see? No. Oh, I wonder. Oh, and there's Heather. Well, Nadina, you've really got to be able to see Heather's creature here too. Oh, She's created. I I'm not sure. Um, oh, mm -hmm. and Tanya. Oh, Nadina, I'm going to have oh, to get like, a, a screenshot or I'll take a picture with my phone of people for holding me. theirs up. It's just like really awesome. Um, here we go. I've got a, I'm taking a picture. So Nadina really uh, has explored many different ways of sharing these. And so I think there's like, oh my goodness, someone's done it on their computer, I think. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I didn't um, have the printouts and I'm, I'm at home now and can't print it out. So I just did it on my computer. <laughs> That's innovative. Wow. You've <laughs> turned it into a digital art project. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, 
Okay, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to take a... If you can keep it up there, I'm going to take a picture again, Nadina, and I'll send these yeah. out to you after. Um, but yeah, oh, no, I just really innovate. explored... Oh, and Heather's is lovely too. So she's really explored different ways of presenting them. And I think you can like, like she showed in some of her images, the um, like having a piece of wood with little holes cut out so they can all kind of poke in or whether it's like a piece of styrofoam or something that you put in your window. And I think this lovely idea of sharing them out within the school community or the broader community, like she worked inside these like kind of sh empty shop fronts. Like maybe there's like a business or a shop or something like within your kind of school neighborhood where they could also be displayed because I think they bring so much joy as well as a public artwork. Um, and Nadina's really explored that, I think, with the kind of uh, art reach and artist in residence project. So I think there's a lot of, or even like scanning them and having them printed, which is a little bit more of a, a process, but um, I think there's potential there in terms of like posting them in more public spaces or around the school or that sort of thing, getting creative there. And at AFK, we're really happy to um, support uh, different projects people have or different ideas if you had an idea for displaying that you needed some support with or maybe even looking into having them printed in color large scale or different things like that where I'm pretty game to um, explore some different ideas there uh, so please do reach out if you have an, a notion to make these and then sit, somehow share them in your community or neighborhood around your school um, does anyone have any other uh, projects that they've created here that they want to share or any questions or ideas about how you might um, use this project? Hello. Hi. Hi, it's Ariel calling from Cleveland. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I'm in the middle of creating mine and um, I'm just thinking this is so good because we're just getting into story writing uh, with my grade ones and um, it's just another avenue of a way to start, give them a beginning of, because you know, sometimes for these little guys it's hard to have a seed to start from. Um, mm -hmm. They have so many ideas. So it's just, they have this little character and then they can create their their starting point at least with this little mm -hmm. character. So nice. yeah, thank you. I already have a connection how I'm gonna use, use it. Yay. Get them to do it. And I suppose even with the format of the puppet, which perhaps for older students might not be like the tie-in that would be as appealing, but maybe for younger ones as well, like having them almost like perform or, um, engage in like a dialogue with another character or something i think there's potential there as well for that kind of learning through play or developing story through play i saw someone else pop up on the screen did anyone else have a oh <laughs> look at that oh my goodness are you missing it still nadina oh yeah. my god i'm gonna wow okay i'm taking a picture of these ones <gasps> So fantastic. And it looks, wow, Jacqueline, those are so great, you and your daughter. <laughs> and Balguni, I love it. Thank, and Michelle, that's fantastic. It looks like you drew your own legs too for your character. Oh, it came from a magazine. Oh. It's just a drawing from a magazine. Oh, beautiful. Sexy <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. And so before people are leaving, I, we are, I mean, we're at 420 now, so a little bit early, but I wanted to share as we're kind of wrapping things up that uh, we're really happy to support your classes and you in uh, carrying out this project. And if you post in the so not in the chat here, uh, because I might lose it, but in the group, like on the um, like on the post section of the group that I created or the team. Um, if you're interested in leading this project with your students, we can send 
uh, color set through the milk run. I promise it will get to you at least eventually um, of around 15 of the color um, collage kits to your class. And because there's a lot of images in each one, we were thinking that your class, like more than one student could share each of the kits. Maybe there's like two or three students who use the same one and maybe have to sort of negotiate between the different body parts, but there are plenty to go around. And so if you let me know, we will send you uh, a class set, so 15 of the color collage kits and also the pre-cut um, white thick paper. We'll set a, send a whole set for your class of the white paper um, so that you're good to go on that front and then just need to find the, the glue sticks and the scissors and the printer paper and the stuff from outside. So hopefully that would make it easy for you to run this project. So please just put your name in the chat on the team and I will take care of that for you and send it in the milk run. And I think hi, hi, I have my hand up, but I can I can just say something. Oh, sorry, Heather, that I missed That's okay. that. Yes, please That's do. Okay. Yes, uh, I just really appreciate the fact that um, I think you mentioned it about the images being selective because it's really annoying with kids when they <laughs> when they start looking through magazines and they always tend to find the bras and the naked butts and. <laughs> All this stuff, right? So I think that the fact that it's curated for them already and, and collected, I think is uh, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. No, I know what you're talking about. And then it's like whole other sort of spin-off or conversations that can be interesting, but not what you set out to really achieve with the project. <laughs> so yeah, there's something nice, I think, about the pre pre-selection, uh, which kind of simplifies the process uh, for sure. Um, so if, does anyone else have any questions for, uh, Nadina or Nadina, do you want to add anything before we kind of, uh, wrap up? Um, well, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the images that you send me and I'm, I just, I'm, you've all exceeded my expectation. I'm so glad that you got out of this. Um, experience what I had hoped that you just have fun and that you're you're excited to take it to your kids and make more of these little weird creatures into the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yeah, with that, I just want to emphasize again. I see people. I'll I'll try to record these all. I see you're entering your names in the chat, so I'll try to make sure I get everyone who's put their name in the chat here. Uh, maybe I'll write a list and then I'll post it again in the um, team and make sure I capture everyone's names who are interested. Uh, um, but if you do ever have any questions, like I said, or um, want some additional support with figuring out a, like, a way to display these or reproduce them, please always feel free to send me an email um, at aepp at sd44.ca. I'm really happy to collaborate and find ways to support and answer questions. Um, so I think with that, um, we may wrap things up here there's just the chats going wild oh yeah. so, you know what what i'll do before i do wrap things up someone's asked where are the videos posted what i'm going to do while we're all still here uh, i will copy the link from the afk website where those videos are posted um here it is and Hopefully that shows up for you. Uh, so that's where you can find the videos and the PDF of that collage kit and also the curriculum document that I've created. And if for some reason that link isn't working for you, it's just on our AFK website under Learn and AFK Artists in Residence. And that's where you will find all of those things. So thanks again, everyone, for taking time out of your busy Monday afternoon. It's really lovely to see you all here and to see your creations. And I will hopefully also be sharing this recording um, on the AFK website, like where we have those other videos posted. So if you came in partway through, or I know there was somebody struggling to get on, um, we can, or if you had a colleague who couldn't connect, uh, we can share the this resource with them at the video in the future as well so i'll post that and i think with that um unless anyone has a last question i will wrap things up and i just want to say again thank you so much nadina it's been such a pleasure working with you on this me too 
Okay. Thank you.